in 2008, the same year that Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight came out, Peter Berg directed a movie that was almost the best, most anarchic candidate to po-faced superhero movies ever, before Kick-Ass, before Super came Hancock. The story of a super-powered bloke who was a rude, reckless alcoholic that didn't give a crap about saving the world and was constantly causing untold damage, widely hated by the city. He saves the life of a PR guru, Jason Bateman, who then goes to work trying to fix his image. Rude, funny, refreshing, it could have changed the face of the genre. Except, the twist it turns out he's a god or something. Who's paired with Bateman's wife Charlize Theron, who is also a god and has been around for 3000 years, and for no reason or other. They have to be apart otherwise their superpowers aren't so good, and so he can't kick about with her even though he loves her because she gets wounded and needs to heal. So he moves to New York. Boo freaking who dot four. The forgotten copyright Sony Julian Moore stars as a woman whose son died 14 months previously in a plane crash, but suddenly everyone keeps telling her that she never even had a son, her husband, her doctor, everyone, even Dominic Quest the dad of the little girl who used to play with her son, whose daughter also died in the crash, insists he had no daughter. At first, that is, when his memory is jogged, they're convinced there's something weird going on. And then the roof is blown off the whole thing. Advertisement, continue reading below the twist. No, really, the actual roof is blown off and the agent who is beginning to explain what has happened to their kids is sucked up into space by some aliens who are conducting a bizarre experiment to test the human maternal bond. Right.5 Jeepers Creepers copyright Rex Shutterstock snaps still a girl and her brother are nearly run off the road by a scary as all hell bloke in a trench coat driving a big truck. They later see the truck parked by an abandoned church where the scary dude is dragging a body out of his truck and stuffing it in a pipe. Holy crumbs. Should they investigate? Clearly not, but they do and it's unbearably tense, get out of there, just in long, quick, before the becoated scary man returns. Except, the twist you can switch this one off midway, when you discover that the scary dude in the coat is actually some sort of winged beast who comes out every few years to eat people's organs and fly about the place conspicuously killing, why is he driving round in the truck wearing the coat, then, terrifying horror movie becomes May monster movie in one flap of a wing.6. Source code Duncan Jones' follow-up to Moon is a smart time travel thriller starring Jake Gyllenhaal as a culter, a comatose army vet on life support whose brain is being used for a mission to try to identify a terrorist who's going to set off a massive bomb in Chicago in six hours' time. Coulter is able to go back in time, sort of, to enter the body, sort of of a bloke on a train which has already been blown up by the same terrorist, and relive the last few minutes of his life to try to discover who did it. It's quite tricky. It turns out, so Coulter has to relive the scene over and over again, like the classic movie Groundhog Minute apostrophe dot twist Coulter catches the crim, snogs the girl, calls his dad and asks his boss to take him off the life support and allow him to die. Perfect ending, only it's not the ending is it? Somehow, we don't know. He gets to rewrite history in the alternate timeline and live happily ever after in the body of someone else, something that was explicitly ruled out by their movie's Basil Exposition character earlier on. Not sure how the train dude's family are going to feel when they find out. But that's a story for the sequel Jones should have made instead of doing Warcraft.7. Kill List Copyright IFC Films This Ben Weekly masterpiece draws inspiration from classics like The Wicker Man as it weaves its increasingly strange and nightmarish narrative of an ex-soldier who takes a job as a contract 